Thank you, Carlos. Thank you, Rohit. And uh, welcome, everyone. I'm so delighted to be here and to be sharing some great content on uh, AI and how we can use APIs to integrate with them. So thank you to Rohit for moderating. And uh, you know, as we go along, um, feel free to you know, type any questions or comments or let's make it a little bit interactive. I'd love to hear some ideas around how you're using, um, using AI uh, in your business or for personal reasons or uh, just how you're doing some cool uh, integrations with, with, the, with those a, 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 APIs, with those AIs. Please feel free to um, share, share in the chat. All right, so a little bit about me. Um, gosh, I just added it up. I've just been 20 years um, in the workforce. Started out in New Zealand with a dairy cooperative called uh, Fonterra. Funnily enough, I, I met one of the co-presenters uh, at an earlier session who's currently working at uh, Fonterra. So uh, it's, a very, it's a very small world. So I've worked with milk came over to Australia, I worked with a beer company, and then I worked with a, a wine company. So a lot of beverage uh, work in there and a lot to be a lot to be integrated. So I've done a done a few things more recently, I've been involved in the MuleSoft uh, community. I'm a meetup leader. Um, being in Melbourne, we were, I think, locked down for quite a while over COVID. It was a bit of a rough time, but I'm really enjoying getting back out, doing some hiking, doing some cycling, doing some running, that type of thing. So, um, and doing what I love to do most is just sharing with the community. So, um, other, other, other than that, I work for, uh, I currently work for a company called uh, Zimmer Biomet. So we're a med tech company. Uh, if the name Zimmer rings a bell, think of um, Zimmer frames. So we used to market Zimmer frames and uh, that term has become quite synonymous. Um, and like, like any good company, we've innovated and we're a, a market, a global market leader in hip and knee and shoulder and tissue implants. So that's what we do. We, uh, our mission is to alleviate pain and improve the quality of lives for people around the world. And I'm loving doing that. Right, so AI, we hear a lot about AI these days, um, especially if you see on LinkedIn, you know, it, uh, it, it's gone from digital transformation as the buzzword to AI being a bit of a buzzword of of, of, of sorts, but um, you know, what, what is it? Look, it's a, a very broad, all encompassing term that describes, uh, you know, machine tasks or activities that would normally be, um, that, that, that can or could be uh, handled by uh, people or, you know, take some kind of human intelligence to carry out. So here, here's a very simple diagram with, uh, you know, some of the areas of artificial intelligence that we're working with today. So machine learning, natural language processing, that's a big one with, you know, chat, um, the rise of chat GPT. So that's getting a lot of, a lot of air time, uh, speech to text, text to speech, um, you know, visual recognition and robots. So all of these things in some way making our lives um, easier and more productive. And the key thing, the, really the key point there is that um, in some way, they're carrying out tasks that um, people would, um, that would require some degree of um, human type intelligence to carry out. So if we want access to um, these um, services and features, how do we do so in a secure way? And how do we how do we integrate our connected applications to harness these services that we may have built using artificial in, in, in intelligence? So I think um, in, in many cases, 
the answer is we could use APIs to allow us to do that. Of course, we want to ensure that uh, services, AI services that we um, expose are reliable and they're secure. So in many cases, we can integrate using APIs. All right, so just quickly, how did, how, how did we get there? Because the, the, the term was first coined in 1956, and certainly prior to that, there were many you know, visionaries who had these great, great, great ideas and theories about um, how robots, computers were going to help us. Um, and you know, we, we, we're seeing, certainly seeing a lot of the, the, the fruits of those labors around the underlying uh, algorithms and academic theories and technology just really um, come to come come to life uh, you know today but it's a um, it's a process or a continuum it's taken many many decades to um, get get here so there's an example um, of uh, you know facial recognition as a concept and the use of technology to recognize face, faces. A, a, a lot of early work was done in the 1950s and 60s, but it wasn't until probably the 2000s that you know viable solutions were um, available to do that in a, in a uh, scale, scalable way. So that's uh, that's quite interesting. Um, so, look, many use cases across um, industries that uh, uh, can benefit from AI. And, you know, if we think, think about any of these things here, well, how do we, how do we go about, um, you know, tapping, in, tapping into these, you know, services? So um, having APIs available to tap into these services is going to be um, a huge, hugely beneficial. So I might just pause there, and um, if anyone wants to um, uh, share in the chat anything interesting that they might have been working on, or anything out there that um, they they wanted to share with the group that they find quite um, quite interesting around uh, having services that they can they can share and make uh, you know comp composable. Um, that would be uh, fantastic, but um, here, here's just a few um, e examples of those that I found um, quite quite interesting. So just in terms of a, um, I'm going to uh, demonstrate or uh, talk about talk about um, a use case in the medical field. That revolves um, that uses a machine learning model, but I just wanted to briefly touch on what a machine learning model actually is and how it works. So it is a wonderful diagram that I took from the NVIDIA uh, uh, website, and I thought it was a great analogy for that's uh, a picture of my uh, poodle Toby. And you could say that um, in, in a way, Toby has a machine learning model in his own head um, around identifying dogs at the dog park. So when Toby was just a puppy, instinctively he knew what um, other, other dogs were, but um, I'm very lucky I've got a dog park uh, next door to where I live. And over time, Toby has learnt that certain breeds of dogs he likes to play with you know the labradors and other smaller dogs other poodles that type of thing but he's recognized through experience that um you know the german shepherds and uh you know some some of the you know the farm dogs um play a little bit rough and he doesn't um he he, he shies away a little bit so you could say that um you know in some ways that's a um, would be an example of a reinforce force enforcement um, learning learning model, but um, you know, in in um, you know, so, 
I say that a bit tongue in cheek, but um, in, in certain certain fields, there are you know fantastic applications for um, machine learning models, and one such place is uh, the field the field of uh, medicine. Okay, so let's look at a use case where we could. Uh, construct a machine learning model and we could tap into that using um, APIs to expose that model for our business case. So if we have a look, um, uh, use the example of a hospital where they perform uh, surgeries each day, um, we see um, a number of different types of surgeries that can require um, implants, so cochlear implants for hearing, pacemakers, hips and knees, um, and all of the tools and nuts and bolts and robotics that go into the process of uh, completing a surgery. So hospitals have consignments, of materials that they use and they have to keep some on site. Maybe they work with partners to keep stock available at warehouses. So the, these are these are cutting edge materials, very expensive. So they need to be um, you know, managed and you know, enough stock needs to be available to perform surgeries to um, improve the quality of uh, patients' patients' lives. So it may be a little bit surprising, but um, you know, when materials are used, they're typically kept in sterile bags. They'll have a, a sticky label with an identifier and batch code, much like you would have um, when you go to the supermarket, but with um, certainly with uh, some uh, information about the, about the implant, batch, expiry, that, that, that sort of thing. And it can be quite a tedious task to scan all of those things that are used one by one in the surgery. You know, this screw, this uh, tool, this bone saw, this adhesive, whatever, it, it all needs to be, um, you know, scanned and accounted for. So that can be quite a, uh, a, a, tedi a tedious task. And really what, um, you know, hospital um, surgery teams and administrators um, don't want to be doing, they don't want to be doing tedious, repetitive work when they don't have to be, they want to be focused on the patient and the quality of care. All right, so what can we do about that? All right. So rather than scanning these labels one by one, why don't we uh, tap into a um, computer vision service to identify the labels on the sheet of paper and automate that process. So here's, here's a good example. Um, and anyone who's familiar with um, MuleSoft, it's a great tool for orchestrating services so you can create services for multiple use cases and you can put them all together and orchestrate them. So here we have a use case where we take a photo of the sheet of paper with all the sticky labels we can see there on the left and I'll um, show a larger um, a sheet like that in a minute. So rather than going scan, 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 20, 20 labels, we take the sheet, we recognize the label area using a machine learning model, and then we can uh, update those backend systems. And we may not necessarily have as an input um, a system like Salesforce available. So maybe we could use an RPA bot that's scanning emails with these images. And on the other side of the equation, when we've scanned all um, the labels for material fulfillment, maybe we need to send these off as an email, maybe we send it off to um, SAP, 
maybe we send it off to a legacy um, you know, back end back end application. All right. So how am I doing for time, Rohit? We have for five minutes. Okay. Two slides we can cover. Perfect. Time. Perfect. All right. Okay. Now In terms of um, creating a machine learning model, um, I think many of you are very adept at uh, you know, languages like Python, but um, I would um, highly recommend having a look at um, the Azure custom vision.ai service. So there's some wonderful um, cognitive and AI services available there, which you can expose out as uh, API endpoints to uh, into integrate into your uh, service orchestrations. So in this case, I have created um, in this example, we've got a model uh, where we've um, passed in a number of examples, we've tagged all of the label areas, and then we construct um, our, our model to identify the areas on the page that have barcodes. So I'm just going to quickly go into Postman. I'm going to call an endpoint. Let's see what happens. All right, so I've been returned back some coordinates for those label areas so I can better interrogate um, those to pass to my backend backend services. That's quite useful. So I've got some coordinates there. Um, doesn't doesn't really mean a lot on the page, but let's just see what it looks like. Yeah. All right. So just an example of those label areas and machine learning models. It's a probability. So you've got a probability that this particular area on the page is a as part of your model, right? And I am. Yeah, you have two minutes to wrap up the session. Fantastic. All right. Well, that's um, that that's me. Um, that's the end of my presentation. So. Um, thank you, everyone, for uh, listening. Uh, we do have a minute or two for uh, questions or comments, if you'd like. People are good. I can't see any questions on the chat. And yeah, Nicole, for the very good, wonderful presentation and very well explained. Thank you. Thank you so much.